South, and if you're anything like me, you love, love gumbo. So guess what? Today we're going to be making a recipe from my cookbook for my shrimp gumbo, and you're going to want to get yourself a nice cup of coffee or a cup of tea, pull up a seat, and let's get started. So to get started with the recipe, let me talk about the ingredients. First of all, you're going to, not even the ingredients, let's talk about the equipment you're going to be needing. Um, you know, I've talked about this before, my cast iron Dutch oven. I love this thing for stews, for breads, for everything. If you haven't gotten one yet, you wanna pick one of these guys up. And I'm also going to be using another staple from the kitchen, which is my cast iron skillet. These are the only two pieces of equipment that you're going to need for this recipe. So first of all, you're going to be needing um, two pounds of shrimp, and you want to get the medium size. You don't want to get the really large ones, but right in the middle, not too tiny, not too big, but right in the middle. And these have already been deveined, and you're going to take the shells off, of course, and get them ready for the recipe. The next thing you're going to need, and we're going to be talking about the, um, the vegetables. You're going to need uh, a medium onion. You're going to chop that onion up. You're also going to need bell pepper, one large bell pepper. You're gonna chop that baby up as well. Two stalks of celery, and you're going to chop that up. And then you're going to be needing uh, four cloves of garlic that you're also going to chop up. And I wish you could smell this. It smells so amazing. This is actually from my garden, and I preserved a lot of the basil. I froze some and some of it I dried, and this is some that I did a freeze dry on. And I basically just washed it and put it in uh, canning jars and I stuck it in the freezer. And when I pull it out, it's a beautiful bright green. It's almost like it just came out of the garden. But anyway, this is what the basil looks like. We're also going to, be going to be doing a tablespoon, a mixture of different herbs. You're going to use oregano, thyme. Um, you're also going to be using um, poultry seasoning. You're going to do a tablespoon, a teaspoon of that as well as granulated garlic. Now I like to mix granulated garlic and don't do that, that garden of uh, the uh, garlic powder. That's, that's dust. You want to get the granulated if you're going to, do, be, going to be using the dry. And you're going to need two bay leaves, these little guys here. And once you cook them, you're going to make sure you take them out because they're not going to get soft. And we'll talk about that later. And I think I have all the ingredients. You're also going to need um, an 18 ounce can, and I use organic tomatoes, an 18 ounce can of chopped organic tomatoes, and you want to make them chopped because you want this, the, uh, the, uh, the gumbo to be nice and chunky when you eat it. So make sure you don't get the crush, you're going to get the chopped tomatoes. Um, you're also going to need a quarter cup of flour, AP flour, none of these self rising or anything like that. Make sure you get that as well as a cup of okra and you're going to finish it off with filet powder and i have some here uh, so let me see i think we're ready to go i think so <laughs> the first thing you're going to do we're going to start by um heating up <clears throat> our dutch oven so normally here's what i do and i want you all to be able to see so i kind of switch it up a little bit normally i do my roux in the dutch oven but because I want you to be able to see what the room looks like, I'm going to do it in the skillet and we'll just pop it over here. So we're going to do our vegetables for today's uh, demonstration. So you're going to take a little bit of olive oil. You're going to coat the bottom of that pan like so. Give it a nice generous coating. That way it doesn't stick of pure olive oil. And then once that heats up, we're then going to take the vegetables and I cheat when I cook. You know, some people do one at a time. I take them and I give them their own little sections right in the bottom of this pot. And once everything is sauteed, then I take them and mix them together. So you can cheat if you want to, but it comes out, it's perfect every time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our onion. And this again is one medium onion that's been chopped. And let me let that heat up just a little bit. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like once it's done and we're going to serve it up with some brown rice and you guys, those of you who know me know I don't do the white stuff. I love the brown rice and it gives it a nice richness that you're probably not going to get from the brown rice. But if you like the white rice, then go for it. But I typically will use brown rice when I'm making my recipes. And once this heats up, I'm going to turn this fire just a little bit more. 
And you're gonna love how easy this recipe is. It is so amazing. And the other thing that I normally do is I take, I, I make this recipe a day, a day ahead of time. Very much like you do with a lot of stews because the next day is kicking, baby. <laughs> You're gonna be like, oh my God. So try to do it a day ahead of time and then prepare to do it the day after. So um, I'm actually making this. This is a dish that I normally do for us for Christmas in addition to all the other stuff. And it is a favorite, a favorite in my household. So of course we have COVID this year. So I'm going to be making two big servings and I'm going to share it with some people that I love who are waiting for a drive-by for me, including my son. Um, so anyway, they'll get it on Christmas Eve and they can eat it for Christmas Eve if they like. If not, then they can always eat it on Christmas Day for dinner. So I think that's heated up enough. And we're going to go ahead and put our onions and again, give them, hear that nice little scissor? We're gonna give each of the vegetables their own little section. You can't really see in the bottom of this, but trust me, it has its own little section. And then we're gonna add the bell pepper. Again, that's one medium bell pepper, and all of these are chopped. And that has this little section. Then we're going to add the celery. And that's going in. Oh my, this is, I wish you guys could smell this, it is so, so, it's amazing. And then, we're going to add our chopped garlic. You know what I'll typically do, is I'll, I don't know if you guys have the elephant garlic, it's a really big, big um, bolt of garlic that you can get. And I normally take one of those and I will just chop that up. But, you can also do four cloves if you're doing the smaller ones. And once you do that, you're going to, while this can I'm going to turn this fire down just a little bit. We're going to start to make the root because this is the magic here. And what I think I'll do, I think you can see that fairly well, is you're going to take one stick of butter, and it's unsalted butter, and you're going to heat this in the bottom of the pan. Now, one of the things I will tell you, don't turn your fire up too high because you don't want to burn this. You want this to come out just right because that is going to be everything for your, for your gumbo. So once you heat this butter up, and while we're talking about butter, um, I was mentioning to my husband who was hanging out in the kitchen when I was making the, um, the recipe that you guys are going to see in a little bit. The difference between the butter that you get that is European butter and American butter, I typically like the European butter because it doesn't have all that water in it. And you're probably going to hear this pop. And the reason it's popping is because it is manufactured or is put together with water. And water helps to increase the volume. And of course, more volume, more profit, right? Anyway, I don't know if you guys really wanted to know that, but I wanted to kind of tell you. So if this were European butter, uh, the Irish butter I love, and also the French butter, they don't put all that water in their butter. So you get pure, pure butter. One of the things you can do if you want to get rid of the water is you can heat this on very, very low and let it then settle again and you'll see the film. You'll see the water that will settle on top, on top of it and you can take that water off and you'll have a more purified form of butter if you want to do that as well. Um, you'll find that the European butters are a lot more expensive for obvious reasons because you're getting pure butter rather than um, rather than water and butter. But this is heating up nicely. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. But again, keep that flame low so that you melt the butter and then when you add the flour, you're going to have to whisk that consistently. So while that's melting, we're going to go ahead and give these a nice little toss. Let me grab a cloth so you can see what's going on with this. Not a whole lot, but just so you can see, since I don't have it low enough for you to be able to take a look inside the pot, if I can manage this. But see, you're just cooking the vegetables off, and you're going to saute those until they're nice and tender. This recipe is just it's so good, and, and you know, you can keep it in the fridge for days and eat off of it if you have a, if it's just a couple of you, like my husband and myself. Although, when I cook, I like to share, so normally there are no leftovers because either the neighbors or somebody gets all of the, uh, the overflow. For me, when I cook, 
if I'm not sharing it with someone, it's like, yeah, I really, really like to share my food because it gives me such joy when I'm able to see the expression on someone's face and they're like, oh man, this is good. That, that is what does it for me, it's everything. Now you see that butter popping? I really don't like that because it gets all over the kitchen, but anyway, we're going to, we're going to manage. And once that uh, melts a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that flour in. Turn this up just a little bit so this can go ahead and cook off. Okay, I think that's not enough because I don't want this popping all over the place. And I'm going to go ahead and dump my flour right now. Again, this is the critical phase. You're going to want to consistently make sure you get yourself a nice um, whisk, one that's about this size, one of the really big ones. And you're going to stir this, and you're not going to stop stirring it until it gets a nice caramel color. You want to make sure you don't burn it. Just keep stirring it. I'm going to pull this, take this flame down just a little bit. If you're not a, an experienced cook, what you can do is make your roux first and then do your vegetables. That way um, you can pay attention to one at a time. But I'm used to multitasking in the kitchen, so it's not a big deal for me. So you consistently stir this. And this is going to take a few minutes. For you to stir and stir and stir until it gets just right. Get a nice little workout. <laughs> oh gosh. You know there are many ways to get exercise in the kitchen. Walking. I walk up and down the stairs because I have another level where I have my freezer and another fridge because I love the, uh, fresh produce especially when um, we're in the middle of the winter and I can't go to the market or if I can't go out and grab stuff out of my garden. But um, I need places to put stuff. <laughs> so I have a freezer, a big fridge upstairs and um, a freezer and a fridge on another level. So I'm constantly running up and down the stairs. So it considers, uh, it, it, it counts as a workout, I guess. This is getting really, really nice. Let me stir and give us a toss at the same time. Oh my gosh, you really need to be coordinated to do what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm used to it, so it's not a big deal for me. I promise you, once you do this, this is going to become one of your family's favorite, favorite recipes because it is so good. And the other thing that I love about this is if you have someone that you want to share a dish with, and um, you're concerned about, I don't know, maybe not getting there in a timely fashion, this really, it serves up very nicely. You can serve it with the rice and just deliver it on a nice little tea towel and say Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday or whatever the occasion might be. Or you just want to say I love you and I was thinking about you. And this does take a moment. And I'm going to take this so you can see. It's starting to turn just a little bit. You can see that. It's not anywhere near where it needs to be. Give us another toss. That's coming along nicely. You know what I think I'm going to do? Only because this is so hot, is I think I'm going to take this, these vegetables and I'm going to sift them on the back on because I am literally roasting over here. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't think about that before. Okay, this is turning nicely. Ah, that's better <laughs> because I had all the steam coming up from the vegetables and it was starting to cook me, girl. <laughs> that's not the idea, right? So cook the food, not me. Oh gosh, a little bit warm. I'm going to step off just for a second. I'll be right back at you in about two seconds. Okay. Perfect. Oh, wow. This is going to be so pretty. Make sure I turn this fire down in the back a little bit. I don't want those to burn. And this smells so good. It is absolutely amazing. 
Oh, we're almost there. It has that nice caramel color. That's what we're looking for. It's looking good. I'm going to step off again. One more second. Ah, and this is what happens when you're a <laughs> camera person and everything else yourself. It takes a minute. <laughs> okay, I think we're all ready. The screw looks amazing. This is what you want your room to look like. Can you see that? It's beautiful, absolutely perfect. And now we can take this pot and bring it to this side, and we can dump in our room. And normally you would be taking the vegetables and adding it, but because I wanted you guys to be able to see what it is we're doing when we cook this. I kind of switched things up a little bit. Take it, put it up. Oh, this is so nice. And now we are going to add our herbs. So we're first, we're going to add the, we just kind of dump everything in. That's the thyme, the granulated garlic, and give it a nice little twist when you do that. As well as the poultry seasoning. This is our oregano. This is also um, herbs that I dry from the garden. And as we talk more, as we move further along, I'm going to talk about the garden and how I try to make sure that most of the things, especially as it has to do with produce, and I do have things like peaches and other things that I grow, how I make sure that I, I use them throughout the year. Let me turn this back guy off. But these are, this is oregano that also came from my garden. We're going to dump that in. And then the basil. And as far as the salt and pepper, you can kind of do that to taste. If you like a lot of heat, you can throw in a little bit. And make sure, again, I don't like that dust, that pepper dust that you have uh, that is sold at the market. I tend to like the granulated garlic, the coarse ground, rather. And that was some sea salt. And you're gonna give that a nice little stir. Actually, I'm going to switch. So how do you take a look at what this looks like in the bottom of the pot? See that? Isn't that amazing? It looks really, really good, and it is. And we're going to keep stirring that, and then you're going to add three cups of water and make sure it's room temperature or if you want it hot, you can also do that as well. And you're going to add your tomatoes. And once you do that, you're gonna let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Let it cook off. You're gonna put your lid on and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the finished gumbo looks like. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put this on a back burner. That way you guys can see. You know, I really love this stove because it has eight burners and it allows me to do quite a bit, especially when I'm doing something like this. Now, I've gone ahead and prepared recipe for you to take a look at. And this gumbo is absolutely amazing. This is all ready to go. <laughs> and my uh, my daughter's best friend and also one of my clients who happened, who used to be a client when I had my restaurant. She's now one of my urban landscape design clients. And so I'm going to also gift her uh, because she's widowed. Although she has a lot of family around, she still loves when I bring her good stuff. So I'm going to gift her. Now I've taken the brown rice, you can see that. And we're going to add to that gumbo. And if you wanna 
finish this off with some nice pepper sauce. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> You can see why I absolutely love this. Now, those of you who want to make this even more hearty, you can add sausage. You can add, sometimes I'll put, uh, you need a firm fish, a white fish, um, even at red snapper, but do it at the very end because you don't want to overcook the fish. Um, but you can add chicken, all kinds of stuff. And you can make this, this recipe can, can become triple if you add additional meat and uh, tomatoes and water. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be you'll be stoked so that's the finished gumbo and i'm going to now set this off to the side so that we can continue to work and if you want to finish that off you know with some if you like heat like i do <laughs> i love tabasco um my husband's a texas Texas Pete man, and this is not to give them a plug, they're not paying me to say this, but this is what actually goes on in my house. So, um, but anyway, you can finish it off with some heat, and sometimes I'll be, even take, and you guys know I have jalapenos in my garden, and I'll take jalapenos and chop them up and put them on top, and oh my gosh. Oh, one other thing I forgot, completely forgot, and we can't forget the feeling, because this is the finish. Let me open this. But you need to make sure, make sure you finish this off with a li little bit of feel like powder. And that's your, your finish. And you can find the light pow feel like powder at most specialty markets, uh, some of your nicer uh, grocery stores. And a lot of people start to carry uh, gourmet ingredients and um, you can pick that up and you finish it off and you know what this is just about i think we've been talking for about 10 minutes yeah it's just starting to boil so we're going to let that simmer but in the meantime and once that happens we're going to add i'm going to go ahead and add this i'm going to add the okra which is a cup of okra this of course came out of my garden you can see why I need a freezer because I want really, really good ingredients to put in my in my recipes, and we're going to add the shrimp. Give that a stir, and so once the the uh, shrimp turns pink, and again, I don't like things that are too overcooked. Although this is a stew, and it's you'll be forgiven. Go ahead and put the lid on, and. The recipe is pretty much done. Now, how good is that? Easy peasy. Gets you in and out of the kitchen, and your friends and your family are going to be mighty impressed that you did this just for them. This has been Bonnie McDaniel from my Tucker Hill farm. And um, you guys, again, make sure you go out and uh, take a look at my blog. It's BonnieMcDanielGoodLiving.com. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. So much for me. I'm basically going to be cooking my cookbook. So, anyway, until next time, smooth.